Hello, B people. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About Bees. So on today's video, we'll be addressing uh, fact number two on our new ebook. So if you want to download the ebook, remember that is on the description down below. So without further ado, let's begin with that. Okay, so this video is sponsored by our own brand, Hummingbee. And we're going to be talking about the ebook 10 shocking facts about bee products that will help you and your family avoid getting sick. And as I was mentioning, today is video number two on the video series. And if you missed or by any chance, uh, video number two, uh, video number one, sorry, uh, that we talked about last week, uh, you can find it on the card above. Also, if you like this type of content, please consider giving it, giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. That way you'll be notified every time that we post content on the channel. Okay, guys, let's begin. Uh, but before we begin, uh, quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I'm just a beekeeper with over 25 years of experience. And uh, I want to share just my knowledge and the knowledge that is found on scientific papers. But I'm not trying to make any health claims that products will cure any disease. Okay, guys, so fact number two. Do bee products really work? And if so, how? So uh, of the bee products, probably the most common one is honey that you can find pretty much everywhere. A second product is bee pollen. It's a lesser known product, but it's a very promising one. The third product that we're going to be talking about on this video is bee propolis. Uh, we're gonna, not going to be talking about much about beeswax because beeswax is not a consumable product. Uh, beeswax is, be, is used in the cosmetic industry. Uh, to the uh, manufacture of several uh, cosmetic products and um, they can provide or beeswax can provide some health benefits there but because it's not consumed we're not gonna talking, be talking about it here on this video. Uh, the fourth product that we're gonna be talking about on this video is bee venom and yeah surprisingly bee, bee venom can provide some health benefits. And the last product that we're going to be talking about is royal jelly. Okay, so let's begin with honey. So honey is the end product of the transformation of nectar. So nectar uh, is collected by bees uh, from flowers. And this nectar is pretty much 80% water and 20% sugar. And when uh, it is transformed into honey, uh, the... Uh, that proportion is inverted. Um, nectar and honey is, primary, is the primary source of energy for bees. So it can provide some other little nutrients, but pretty much it provides just energy. There's many varieties of honey depending on the botanical origin of it, uh, meaning that depending on the type of plant that, that the honey or the nectar was collected, uh, the honey will have a specific uh, characteristic. So in the market, you can find honeys that are very clear and very runny, or you can find honeys that are very dark and dense. So as long as the honey is very natural, uh, any honey is, is good uh, uh, for you. And uh, um, the characteristics of color and density will just uh, vary a little bit. And as I was mentioning, uh, honey is 20% water and 80% sugars. One of the questions that I usually get and we address in the ebook is if diabetics can consume honey. And we're going to be talking about that specifically on fact number nine or video number nine on this video series. Uh, if you're impatient like I am, you can download the ebook on the description down below and that way you can have access to all of the facts right now. 
Okay, so honey, besides of the sugars and the water it contains, it contains uh, enzymes, vitamins and minerals. But as I was mentioning, it, the amounts that they contain, the, the contained in honey are not very, very high. So the main health benefits of honey that research has found is antioxidant capacity, antibacterial activity, anti-inflammatory potential, and wound healing properties. And most of the properties, especially antibacterial and wound healing properties, come from oxygen peroxide. And honey, all honeys natural contain, naturally contain oxygen peroxide, which is a potent antibacterial compound. A uh, very interesting honey that we're going to be talking about on fact number 10 or video number 10 on this video series is Manuka honey and we're going to be uh, making a specific video about it because Manuka honey has some very interesting properties that we're going to mention on that video so stay tuned for that. Okay now let's talk a little bit about bee pollen. So bee pollen uh, like, ne like nectar comes from flowers, but this time around it comes from a different uh, structure inside of the flowers. It is the primary source of nutrients for bees. So nectar just provides uh, energy for bees, but for all other nutrients, bees rely on bee pollen. Because bee pollen is the one that will contain all the protein and uh, vitamins and minerals that bees need. Uh, something really interesting about bee pollen is that at the microscopic level, uh, bee pollen, each grain is uh, surrounded by a very thick, hard layer that is not easy to break down and uh, you have to break it down in order to access the nutrients that are trapped inside. So for that reason, bees use bacteria and yeast to break it down. So when bees uh, bring back the pollen from the, uh, from the field, they put it inside of the cells and they mix it with the natural bacteria and yeasts that are present in the hives. And those bacteria and yeasts uh, will ferment the pollen and uh, that fermentation process provides an uh, acidic environment that breaks down that thick layer and so, can, so bees can access the nutrients trapped inside. For us humans, we don't need the fermentation process of the pollen because we have an acidic uh, environment in our stomachs and that acid will break down the pollen and we can access the nutrients inside of it. So we beekeepers, we collect the bee pollen putting uh, some special traps or collectors in the hives and the bees have to squeeze through um, some holes inside of those uh, collectors and so the uh, pellets that they bring back in uh, in their hind legs, uh, drop down and um, are collected in a basket. But don't worry, those uh, collectors are designed so not all the bee pollen is taken out. So um, bees can still uh, use bee pollen inside of the hive. After the collection process or the harvesting, uh, we bee keepers, we dehydrate the bee pollen and uh, we do that because uh, at room temperature bee pollen, because of the high moisture content that it has, it will spoil over time, it will start to grow mold and you don't want that on any food product. So we make a dehydration process that is a very long dehydration process at a very low temperature that only gets rid of the moisture and does not get rid of the nutrients. Uh, there's a color pattern variation on bee pollen and that, be, that color pa pattern variation comes uh, um, from the type of the plant that the bee pollen was collected. So each type of plant has a different pollen color and so if the bees are collecting from a wide variety of flowers, uh, the batch uh, of the bee pollen will be uh, like a rainbow pattern of colors. So um, 
On the macronutrient side of pea pollen, uh, it is pretty much protein, depending on the uh, origin. It will vary a little bit, but it's around 30% plant-based protein. And the protein is very high quality because it contains all essential amino acids. Also, it, con it contains fiber, and that fiber comes from that thick, hard layer that I was talking about that surrounds the, uh, the nutrients inside of the microscopic uh, grain. It also contains some unsaturated fats that are also very good for your health. On the micronutrient side, it contains antioxidants and pigments. And uh, research has found that there's around 18 different antioxidants in bee pollen. And from those antioxidants, there's uh, a specific one called myricetin, and that myricetin is the one that is responsible for helping with controlling the symptoms of seasonal allergies. So if you by any chance suffer from seasonal allergies, the consumption of bee pollen might help with the symptoms. Also, it contains a carotenoid called zeaxanthin. It is a pigment and that uh, pigment is found on your eyes. So uh, it helps to keep your eyes healthy. Also, research has found that um, bee pollen might have antibacterial and anti-tumor potential. Okay, now let's move into bee propolis. So bee propolis, uh, this time around, is not collected from flowers. Uh, bees collected from nature, but not from flowers. It is collected, collected from trunks of some trees and new buds of some types of shrubs. It is in its raw form, is a sticky resin uh, that bees use inside of the hive because it acts as a glue, a natural glue, that they can glue together different parts of the hive. They can seal crevices, uh, protect it from moisture, reduce entrances, and so on. And as a positive side effect for bees, because bee propolis uh, has antibacterial properties, it helps with. Uh, them uh, keeping a healthy environment inside of the hive. So there's uh, pretty much three types of propolis around the world. The most common one is brown propolis and uh, is pretty much found everywhere in the world. And uh, the other two is green propolis and red propolis. And green and red propolis are only produced in some small regions in Brazil. You can't find red and green propolis uh, anywhere else in the world but in Brazil. And uh, both uh, green and red propolis are the ones that are uh, the ones that contain the highest amount of antioxidants that I'm gonna talk about uh, later on. Okay, so because it is a sticky resin in its raw form, it's not uh, edible, you can't consume bee propolis in its raw form, you have to make an extraction of the good stuff that is inside of the propolis. And for that purpose, we use grain alcohol or water or both, in, and so we can extract all the uh, healthy uh, compounds inside of it. Um, on the extraction, uh, sorry, uh, the extract is not uh, very palatable, uh, it's very strong and you have to dilute it further with water to be consumed or you have to mix it with, or with other ingredients so it is uh, consumable. Uh, and from the bee products, bee propolis is probably the one that has the most uh, promising health benefits. So bee propolis contains some biocompounds, and when I say biocompounds, are the type of substances that your body does not need to survive, but it benefits from the consumption of them. So uh, in bee propolis, we can find flavonoids and phenolic acids as the primary biocompounds. And uh, there's a novel, function or novel health benefit of bee propolis 
that is worth mentioning on a different chapter so we're gonna talk about it on fact number eight or video number eight on this video series but you can find it on your ebook that you can download right now on the link that is on the description down below so uh B propolis has many many different uh, health benefits that research has found among them are the ones that you see on your screen but there are antioxidant properties antibacterial antiviral antifungal and so on B propolis as i was mentioning is probably the one that has uh, the most health benefit potential okay now let's move on with royal jelly so royal jelly is a very complex substance um, because it is produced by bees not collected by bees and uh, about that we're going to be talking about on uh, fact number three or video number three which is next week i'm going to be explaining what does what that means so it is the food provided for larvae and queens. So bees feed uh, larvae on uh, the first three days of the larval stage um, with royal jelly. But for the queen, uh, when it, the queen is a larvae, it's fed for the whole five days uh, of the larval stage. And that makes a difference uh, of turning what would be a worker bee into a queen bee and when the queen is born and throughout the whole her whole life it is gonna be fed with royal jelly so royal jelly is uh, has a protein family of nine different members which are called major royal jelly proteins and those proteins are responsible for the queen development and are the ones uh, that uh, probably have the most health benefits for humans as well so royal jelly has a milky yellowish yellowish color and an acidic smell and metallic taste so that's uh, that doesn't sound very tasty uh, or very appealing but once you try it is not really that bad so royal jelly the production of it is on a very small scale unlike honey or uh, bee pollen for those products uh, you can produce uh, several uh, pounds of them but with royal jelly we're just talking about ounces probably one ounce per hive every 17 72 hours when you have dedicated hives for that purpose so uh, as i mentioned uh, royal jelly contains proteins peptides and free amino acids peptides are chains of free amino acids or chains of amino acids uh, from uh, that can vary from 2 to 50 amino acids in that chain and those proteins peptides and free amino acids are the ones that provide the health benefits on royal jelly it also contains some lipids and b vitamins uh, which are worth mentioning because uh, they are in higher amounts in antioxidants in in royal jelly and they can provide some health benefits as well some of the health benefits that you find on uh, research papers about royal jelly are antibacterial anti-inflammatory anti immunomodulatory and so on now let's talk about bee venom so bee venom is not probably a substance or a product of bees that you would think about providing health benefits but uh, they actually or it actually can provide health benefits so uh, it does has potential health benefits but we just know it for producing inflammation and pain when a bee stings us bee venom can be collected without killing bees with special collectors that are placed uh, on the entrance of the hive and bees uh, deposit the uh, venom on a um, glass surface and then the bee venom can be collected to use uh, on cosmetics and 
uh, some other uh, potential remedies. Uh, the direct application of a B is something that we beekeepers are used to. And uh, in some countries, like in East Europe uh, or Eastern Europe, um, those countries are famous for having centers that where people can go and get stung directly to uh, in order to get the health benefits of the uh, bee venom. So the active compounds of bee venom are enzymes and peptides, and most of them are responsible for uh, having that uh, painful reaction and the swelling reaction. And those enzymes are phospholipase A2 and B, hyaluronidase, phosphatase, and alpha-glucosidase. It also contains some peptides, which are melitine, apamine, MCD peptide, and so on. And as I was mentioning, those enzymes and peptides are both responsible for providing that pain and swelling reaction, local reaction, but those can provide some health, long-term health benefits as well. So on the potential health benefits, uh, some research has found benefits uh, around Parkinson's disease, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, multiple sclerosis, cancer, level fibrosis, and so on. So it is a very promising product as well. Okay, guys, we have reached the end of this uh, video, so stay tuned for next week, where we're going to be talking about fact number three. Are all bee products actually produced by bees? Yes, but not really. So stay tuned for that. But if you want to have access to all that information right now, uh, make sure to go to the description down below, and there you can find the link to the ebook. And you can download it right now. Also, don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like this type of content, to subscribe, and to uh, activate the notification bell. So that way you will be notified every time that we post a new video. Okay, guys. So thank you very much for attending uh, this video and hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.